Hey everybody, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to start building a glitch ensemble and I won't have time to finish it so we'll do that in a future tutorial. Today I'm going to start by building a macro that can create many different type of effects depending on the values that get sent to the inputs. So to start, we're going to have six inputs. One is going to be the sound. Uh, one will be a gate input that controls whether the effect is on or off. And then we'll have four variables that kind of control the type of glitch that we're going to have. And those are going to be speed, delay, feedback, and feedback type. And I'll show you know, later on how we can use these to get a wide variety of different effects. So to begin, we're going to have the audio input flow into a crossfader. And this crossfader is going to flow into our, our single delay. And this delay will be uh, the part of our structure that gives us the capability to get kind of a stutter glitch effect. And we're going to set that to be on only when the gate is on. So we're going to multiply the feedback amount by the gate. And if the gate is on, then the feedback will be greater than zero and otherwise we'll just keep the feedback at zero. So basically the audio flowing into the single delay will be from the single delay itself when we want to create a stutter glitch and otherwise we just want to have the incoming audio flowing into the delay. All right, then we can supply the um, delay input of the delay module with a value. And that has some things we need to do as well. So we're going to compare it to zero. And we also want to keep the feedback loop off if the delay time is zero. So if we set the delay time to zero, that's basically a way for us to say there's no stutter glitch happening right now. And in case it's equal to zero, we end up multiplying the feedback amount by zero as well. So um, we can just turn that whole part of the structure off very easily. And then we'll set the delay time. And the delay time is only going to be greater than zero if the gate is greater than zero so we'll only have this going if the effect is on and we can use that to flow into the delay input of our single delay module okay so our first delay effect here can give us kinda anything from an echo to a stutter glitch we're gonna use a second single delay module it's gonna get its audio from the first and this one is gonna control the speed of the playback and I've done some tutorials on this before. We can use an integrator filter uh, flowing into the delay input of a single delay module to get some pretty interesting effects. We can get a uh, vinyl scratch sound. We can get a reverse sound. We can get like half speed sounds and stuff like that. So we'll use that coming directly after the first delay. And we want to set the integrator filter to be zero on a new gate value. And then we'll use the speed input to calculate the input to the integrator filter. And once again, we want this to be off when the gate is off. So we can use a selector module that is attached to the gate compare module we made already and that'll flow into the position input 
And if the position is 0, we can simply have the output be 0, so we don't need to connect anything to the 0 input. And then we'll take the speed value, invert it, and then add 1 to it. And this is just a way for us to go from kind of an intuitive input to the speed uh, to something that's mathematically useful to the integrator filter. So this way the user can input a value of 1 to get normal playback speed or a value of negative 1 to get reverse playback speed. And we'll just calculate the value that needs to go into the integrator filter to achieve that effect. All right, so the last thing we need to do is just to set up our feedback loop. I'm going to use another crossfade module to do that. And while I'm at it, I want to set these both to use linear crossfadings. And the reason for that is that sometimes you can get a pretty bad buildup of audio using uh, sine fading. All right, so each of the delay modules is going to flow into one of the crossfade inputs, and then we'll use the feedback type input to control which one is used at any given point in time. And we can connect the second single delay to our output and the feedback from the first crossfade module back into, or from our second crossfade module back into the first. Okay, so let's just connect this up real quick, and then I'll show you um, some really basic, simple examples of what this structure can do. And in the next tutorial, we'll get into some more interesting effects that we can make and show how we can create a larger structure around it. One thing I do need to do as well is we need to massively increase the buffer size of the delays. They're currently at 1,000 milliseconds. I like to have them somewhere closer to 100,000 milliseconds. All right. So that's just a simple stutter getting feedback from itself. Uh, let's go to play the same thing at half speed, simply by dropping the speed to 0.5. Now we can change the feedback source to the second delay module, and then the speed will decrease with each iteration. And a lot of the more interesting things we can do, uh, we would use some continuous signals instead of constants to create varying effects. And I don't want to get too deep into that right now, but there's a lot of stuff we can do. But just as an example, we can use an envelope to control, for example, the delay time of our overall effect here. And I'll just supply the input of the envelope with the gate module and create some simple constants just for a quick example. And that'll give us a value from 0 to 1 or whatever, but then we can just multiply by whatever we want the maximum delay time to be, say 500 milliseconds, and supply that input into the delay input of our macro.
Alright, if you all like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot more of written text tutorials at our website, reactortutorials.com as well. I hope to see you next week.